if you're thinking about getting another cat, um, we really need to think about what the current resident cat really would think about that. Many people would fall into the trap of thinking that their cat might need a friend, particularly if a feline companion has recently passed away. Um, certainly as people, that's how we might feel, and um, we need to be careful not to transfer these feelings onto animals. It's easy to think that if you just put cats together, they will just figure it out for themselves. The unfortunate reality is that many cats that are returned to cat protection are due to poor integration with the existing resident cat. The process to introduce cats to other cats takes many stages, and so what we really need to do is set these cats up for success. So a change of environment can be really overwhelming for a new cat. This is why we would recommend setting up a sanctuary room. So this can be um, a spare bedroom, which is ideal, and, and particularly something that's not the resident cat's favourite room. Um, you need to pop in all the cat's resources that they need, so a food bowl, water bowl, litter tray, all spaced out within that bedroom. Every cat's going to be different, um, but as a very rough guide, the new cat should be in the sanctuary room, away from the resident, for at least a week. This will allow the, the new cat time to gradually adapt to their new surroundings before meeting uh, the resident cat. So the most important stage um, in introducing cats to other cats is scent swapping. Um, it's really important that this stage isn't rushed at all. Um, it's quite common for people to either rush through it or actually skip it altogether. And this is where you collect scent from one cat, so on the cheeks and on the forehead with a clean cloth, and then you swap it and give it to the other cats, ideally in the middle of the floor, so the cat has the choice to either approach it or avoid it. Um, this is really important so cats that are so governed by scent um, can really start getting very gradually used to the scent of another cat. The scents will need to be topped up um, ideally at least once a day and because the scents will disappear over time. So many people struggle to know when to move on to the next stage and the important thing to think about is that it's when both cats are ready. Um, so this is when both cats are not reacting to the scent of the other cat and have not reacted for a few days. Some people may be tempted to go straight to a face-to-face, -face, but I would avoid that because the more steps we can put in, the more likely it is that the cats will get on. So in this respect, we would want to um, put in like a glass barrier, so whether somebody's got patio doors or, or French glass doors within the house, and then the cats can see each other through the glass, but because it's a solid barrier, they can't get to one another. The other thing to consider is that we always need to be give the cats choice. So I wouldn't put one cat right next to the glass. What I want to do is open the door the other side of the room and allow a cat to come in and choose whether to approach that glass barrier or not. When the, sort of the, the introductions have finished, um, just gently usher the new cat back to their sanctuary room. So after the glass barrier, um, if we can break it down into further steps, brilliant. So what we can do would be to introduce a mesh barrier. Um, some people, if they have rabbits, for example, can use a run lid and put that through the door frame sort of temporarily. Equally, what people can do is go to a DIY store and buy some mesh that they could temporarily tack to a door frame, or it could even be a, a baby gate. So this will allow the cats to not only see each other, but also start to smell each other too, while still having a bit of a barrier so they can't get to one another. And this would be certainly advisable before a face-to-face -face introduction. So after multiple sessions of the um, seeing each other through the mesh barrier, we're finally going to get to the face-to-face. -face. Um, so this should be quite far down through the process. And when we do this, again, we don't want to put one cat in front of the other cat. We want to give both cats the choice by opening the door and allowing them to choose whether to come through or not. Again, both cats need to be aware of where the exit points are and uh, where they can get up high and keeping these introductions short and sweet and making sure we're forming positive associations with each other by using treats or interactive play. Hopefully the cats won't show any signs of conflict, but we need to have a plan of what to do if that happens. So owners need to think about um, carefully monitoring the cat's um, behaviours and if it is becoming a bit tense, we really need to um, block off their eye contact between the two cats if they are starting to stare at each other. Um, you can do this with like something like a solid, quite you know, opaque blanket or a thick uh, pillow. It's anything that, like I say, blocks uh, two cats that might be staring each other off. Um, by making sure that cats can break this eye contact, it allows them to retreat from one another and then we need to very carefully encourage the resident cat away from the new cat and the new cat back to the sanctuary room. Introductions should be really quite short, so up to sort of five minutes at a time. How frequent they are really much depends on your two cats and how it's going. Owners during this process need to very carefully observe their cats 
to see whether there's any signs of possible conflict. Again, it's going to be quite subtle, ears moving around to the sides, uh, pupils becoming large or dilated, um, quite a tense body posture, um, they might go into a crouched position and they may well avoid eye contact with the other cat. However, by taking these steps we can dramatically improve the quality of life of both of the cats and improve their chances of cohabiting together successfully. If owners have any particular problems when introducing their cats, it's better to seek help sooner rather than later. At Cats Protection, we would recommend um, that owners seek the help of first of all their vet to rule out any medical problems and then get a referral to a qualified behaviourist, such as a member of the Association of Pet Behaviour Counsellors.